Welcome to a lesson on determining effective annual yield. Let's start by reviewing the three different ways that yield or interest can be calculated. The most basic formula is simple interest, where interest is paid once a year. The most common interest is compounded interest, where the interest is paid a certain number of times per year, in this case n times per year. And there's also something called continuous interest, where the interest is paid continuously throughout the year. And you should already be familiar with all three of these formulas. The effective annual yield, sometimes called effective annual rate or annual equivalent rate, is the simple interest rate that would produce the same return at the end of one year as an account that paid compounded interest. And the compounded interest rate is called the nominal rate. So the effective annual yield would be the simple interest rate that produces the same return as the nominal rate. And the effective annual yield is a way of comparing different investment accounts that pay different compounded interest. And it can also be used for loans since a loan is an investment for the person or company making the loan. And we should note that some institutions calculate AER differently by including or not including certain fees. So it's always important to read the fine print. Before we take a look at the formula for effective annual yield, let's look at an example. Determine the future value of an investment of $2,000 that pays 6% interest compounded monthly for one year. So here's our compounded interest formula. Let's go ahead and answer this first question. So the amount after the one year is going to be equal to the principal, which is $2,000, times the quantity 1 plus the rate expressed as a decimal. So 6% would be 0.06 divided by n, the number of compounds per year, it's paid monthly, so n would be 12. We raise this to the power of n times t. Again, n is the number of compounds, so that would be 12. And the time in years is one year. So let's go ahead and figure out what this future value would be. So we have 2,000, open parenthesis, 1 plus 0 0.06, divided by 12, close parenthesis, raised to the 12th power. So the ending balance would be $2,123.36. The next sentence says, then use the simple interest formula to determine what the simple interest rate would need to be to have the same return. And the simple interest rate would be the effective annual yield. So we want to use this simple interest formula to determine what R would be if we know that the amount after one year is equal to $2,123.36. So the principal was $2,000. One plus our interest rate, that's going to be our effective annual yield, raised to the power of T, but T is equal to 1. So if we solve this for R, we'll have the effective annual rate. So we'll divide both sides by 2,000. That's going to give us 1.06168. We'll subtract 1 from both sides. And so the simple interest rate with the same return would be 0 0.06168, which will convert to 6.17%. So 6% would be the nominal interest rate, 6.17% would be the effective annual rate or effective annual yield. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the shortcut formula to determine effective annual yield. So here's the formula that we can use to determine the effective annual rate, where y would be the effective annual rate, r is the interest rate as a decimal, and n is the number of compounds per year. Before we take a look at some additional examples, Let's take a look at where this formula came from. 
remember on our first example we determined the amount A using compound interest and then we use that amount to determine R in the simple interest formula. So if we replace A in the simple interest formula with the compound interest formula and then solve for R in the simple interest formula, it should give us the formula for effective annual yield. Let's go ahead and give it a try. Remember T would be equal to 1, so we'd have P times the quantity 1 plus R over N to the power of N would be equal to the simple interest formula P times the quantity 1 plus and then instead of using little r, we'll use big Y, raised to the power of t, but t is equal to 1. So if we solve this equation for y, we should have our effective annual yield formula. We can divide both sides by p. That would simplify out. So we'd have 1 plus r over n raised to the power of n equals y plus 1. And if we subtract 1 on both sides, we have our formula. y is equal to the quantity 1 plus r over n to the nth power minus 1. Let's go and take a look at two more examples. Here it says to determine the effective annual yield of the following two accounts if you invest $5,000. And notice that to determine the effective annual rate, it's not required that we know the amount of the investment. So we have y equals... 1 plus 0 0.049. Now it's compounded monthly, so n is 12, raised to the 12th power minus 1. And then for the second example, we'd have y equals the quantity 1 plus 0 0.08. Now this is compounded quarterly, so there's four quarters in one year, so n is equal to 4. Let's go and see what this gives us. Here's our first effective annual yield. Let's go ahead and determine the second one while we're here. So let's go ahead and convert these to percentages. Remember, we convert a decimal to percent by multiplying by 100. So the first effective annual yield will be approximately 5.01%. And the second effective annual yield will be approximately 8.24%. Remember what this tells us is that in order to get the same return as a 4.9% return compounded monthly, it would take a simple interest rate of 5.01%. And for 8% compounded quarterly, it would take a simple interest of 8.24% for the same return. I hope you found this helpful. In the next video, we'll take a look at how we can use the TI-84 to, to determine the effective annual yield very quickly. Thank you for watching.